every movie, video game, and book, there's always a big bad antagonist that the main character must face off against. The fact is that the story being told can only be interesting and exciting if there's someone for you to root against. Hell, I would argue that a great antagonist is just as important as the main character of every story. With that being said, there are so many different ways you can handle villains in video games. From having them do evil things, but making them relatable to the point where you understand where they are coming from, to just downright making them the worst type of person so that you have every single reason to hate them. Villains bring out some of the most insane emotions within each of us. And one video game series that has always explored different types of antagonists in stories is Silent Hill. You have relatable villains that are viewed as antagonists because of a situation out of their control. You have villains that only become evil because of the way they were treated in the past. And of course, you have villains that are just evil to the core. Silent Hill has it all. So on this episode of Nerd Space Games, we dive down into the top 10 best villains of the franchise. Before that though, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to my channel if you like the content that I bring you guys. Especially if you love survival horror games like Resident Evil and Silent Hill, as I do at least one survival horror related video once per week. Also, leave a like on today's video if you enjoyed today's topic. Plus, for those of you looking to go above and beyond and supporting the channel, you can become a STARS member today by clicking that join button and selecting the tier that works best for you. Anyway, this is Nerd Space Games with my top 10 best Silent Hill villains. Let's get it. Number 10, Eddie, Silent Hill 2. Eddie, have you gone nuts? I knew it. You too. You're just like him, James. Hey, I didn't mean anything. Don't bother. I understand. You've been laughing at me all along, haven't you? Ever since we first met. I'll kill you, James. Eddie comes from one of the most psychological games of the franchise, Silent Hill 2. So seeing which game he comes from, obviously his backstory is full of trauma. Because of his weight, Eddie was bullied throughout his childhood and even into his adult life with people constantly making fun of him his entire life. Eventually, Eddie snapped under the pressure and made his first and only kill, a dog. The dog belonged to a football player who bullied Eddie even after high school. After which, apparently the football player witnessed Eddie do this and then Eddie shot him in the kneecap. As far as killing him, the evidence points to Eddie actually letting him live and running away to Silent Hill. We know this because Eddie actually makes a comment regarding the man that he shot. Still, Eddie is without a doubt a minor antagonist of Silent Hill 2. After following him throughout the game, James says the wrong thing at the wrong time and sets Eddie off on a murderous rampage against James. So unfortunately, James has to fight back and kill Eddie. While he's not the most unique villain of the franchise, he's at least deserving of the bottom spot on this list. And let's be real for a second, he killed a fucking dog. To me, that's about as evil as they come. Number 9, George, Silent Hill Downpour. How's it going, Murph? Heard you're gonna be leaving us soon. What do you want, Sewell? You weren't thinking of leaving before you paid back my favor, were you? Napier. <laughs> what am I talking about? Of course you're gonna keep your end of the deal. You're a real stand-up guy, Murphy. Parole report says so right there in black and white. A model prisoner, right? Sure it would be awful if they found out about what you did to that child bugger and bastard, though, wouldn't it? I mean, shit. That would ruin everything, wouldn't it? So technically, George is not actually the main antagonist of Silent Hill Downpour. If we're being technical, then that title would probably go to Anne Cunningham, the officer that chases Murphy, the main character, throughout most of the game out of revenge. With that being said, it's kind of hard to view her as a villain, considering that she's just trying to kill the man who murdered her father, or at least who she believes murdered her father. And even with that in mind, she finds herself unable to do it multiple times. George, on the other hand, makes for a much more appealing villain to Murphy. Depending on your actions throughout the story, George in most endings is revealed to be a dirty cop. He's an officer that takes advantage of convicts and convinces them to do his dirty work, rather it be in the form of blackmailing them or bribing them in some way. In Murphy's case, George offers him a chance at killing the man responsible for murdering his son. Murphy takes the opportunity and kills his son's murderer. But in doing so, he gives George exactly what he needs, a way to blackmail Murphy into doing what he wants. And that goal of his is to kill another cop who is planning on turning George in. 
Now, George is an interesting villain as he's one of very few villains of the franchise that don't appear in Silent Hill or any of the other worlds. However, that's part of the reason why he doesn't move up higher on this list. Considering that he's barely in the game and the fact that he's more or less evil depending on the actions of Murphy throughout the game, it makes him a weaker antagonist compared to other villains of Silent Hill. Still, in the best ending of the game, it's revealed that he beat a cop so badly that he was comatose the rest of his life and he pinned the crime on Murphy. That's enough to at least earn him a bottom spot on this list. Number 8. Michael Kaufman, Silent Hill Kaufman is actually a minor antagonist of the Silent Hill franchise with him appearing in multiple games. He works as a doctor at Akamilla Hospital, but it's what he does behind the scenes that makes him so evil. First, Kaufman works closely with the Order and Dahlia as most of their dealings are centered around a drug called PTV. Created from the local plant White Lotus, PTV is a highly addictive drug that Kaufman sells to tourists which helps both the Order and Kaufman's pockets stay full of money. When the fire happened, Kaufman is the doctor that the Order came to for help in order to save Alessa and falsify her death so that Dahlia was free to torture her in the basement of the Akamilla Hospital without anybody suspecting a thing. However, Kaufman being someone that never wants to get his own hands dirty decides to get one of his associates, Lisa Garland, addicted to PTV to the point where he can hold the drug over her or she'll risk major withdrawals caused by the addiction to the PTV. In return for Lisa being a caretaker of Alessa in the basement of the Akamela Hospital, Kaufman would give her more and more PTV to satisfy her addiction. When Cheryl, the other half of Alessa's soul, returns back to Silent Hill, Alessa unleashes her nightmares onto the small town which created the fog world and the other world. With Kaufman realizing what happened, he begins to create a way to separate God from Alessa's body so that it can be destroyed, and Kaufman can escape the town once and for all. While this might sound like a good deed by Kaufman, in reality this is just his selfish nature coming out as he'll need to do whatever he needs to do in order to escape Alessa's nightmares once and for all. Luckily the guy doesn't get away with everything he has done thanks to the ghost, kind of ghost figure of Lisa preventing him from escaping. While he's nowhere near as great of a villain as the main antagonist of Silent Hill, Kaufman is someone that is easily hated for all the things he's done to beloved characters like Alessa and Lisa. Number 7, Father Vincent Smith, Silent Hill 3. Well, the guest of honor has arrived. Let's get this party started. Heather, go ahead and kill this crazy bitch. Next up, the biggest snake of the series, Father Vincent. Whereas most of the villains on this list are pretty much in your face villains or the typical villain seen in most media nowadays, Father Vincent is someone that prefers to have others do his dirty deeds. Actually, he pretty much openly admits to this key trait of his. As a high ranking official within the Order, the main cult that is seen throughout the Silent Hill franchise, Father Vincent believes in the same God as other villains of the franchise believe in, like Dahlia and Claudia. The difference with Father Vincent though is that he doesn't believe this god should be reborn as he enjoys the world he lives in as is. And while that might seem like someone who would be on the same side as the player, Father Vincent is only looking out for himself and will do anything he sees fit to prevent the birth of God. So in that regard, Father Vincent begins manipulating Heather by sending her to retrieve an artifact that can be used against Claudia Wolf, the other main antagonist of Silent Hill 3. Of course, he does this knowing that the person in possession of this artifact, Leonard Wolf, is now a monster and there's a high probability that Heather will be killed in the process. Oh, and did I mention that he stole money from the donations made to the church to spend on himself? Overall, Father Vincent doesn't care who must die or what he must sacrifice so long as he can have the cult to himself, prevent the birth of God, and kill Claudia Wolf. Number 6, Judge Holloway, Silent Hill Homecoming. The Founders. They had good intentions. They left the Order to start a new life in Shepherd's Glen, where they feared the wrath of our God. So they made a pact 
to keep us safe. All that was required was a small sacrifice. Our children. Silent Hill Homecoming is definitely not one of the better Silent Hill games. With that being said, it definitely does have one of the most fucked up villains of the franchise. Enter Judge Holloway. A mother of two, Holloway is one of the four heads of the Shepherd's Glen community, a small community established just outside of Silent Hill. Near the end of the game, it's revealed that the founders of Shepherd's Glen were all cult members who left the religion behind for a chance at a better life. However, they learned that in order to keep the monsters at bay and prevent the other world from taking over Shepherd's Glen, each family family must sacrifice one of their children every 50 years. Each family had a specific way their children must be sacrificed. For example, the Shepherd family must kill one of their own children by drowning while the Holloway family must do it by strangulation. In Judge Holloway's case, she chose her youngest daughter and strangled her to death in order to abide by that religion. And it gets much worse. Most of the parents that went through with the murders face regret and remorse for what they did. Holloway on the other hand didn't as she saw it as something that was required and that it was her duty. That's pretty fucked up. Just her murdering her own daughter without hesitation should be enough to help her crack this list, but it doesn't stop there. After realizing that the ritual failed due to an accident with the Shepherd family, Judge Holloway immediately went back to the old religion in order to save herself. Hell, once her older daughter found out about the truth about her sister, Holloway tried having her killed just to protect herself and the cult. She obviously didn't care about her family and she only cared about keeping herself alive. On top of that, she was going to let her older daughter be tortured to death while she tortured and killed the main character with a drill bit. Seriously, this girl is pretty fucked up. No, Alex. It's time I finished what your father could. Number 5, Pyramid Head, Silent Hill 2. Pyramid Head is an interesting choice for a couple of reasons. For one, he's the only monster or creature-like villain that's on this list. And two, there's an argument that could be made about how he's not actually a villain or even one of the antagonists of Silent Hill 2. Hell, in a way, he's more of a protagonist when you think about it. Still, it's extremely hard to not include Pyramid Head on this list of most iconic villains of Silent Hill despite what he means to James. But anyways, let's dive a little deeper. Throughout Silent Hill 2, James is hunted by the Executioner, a monster carrying a massive sword with, you guessed it, a pyramid for his head. At first, Pyramid Head seems to be killing all of the monsters in Silent Hill, starting with mannequins in the apartment building. Eventually though, it'll get to the point of the game where Pyramid Head begins killing Maria, someone who looks like Mary, the deceased wife of James. After the final time, we learn the truth behind Pyramid Head. He's actually created from James's guilt of killing his wife and that Pyramid Head's sole purpose is to punish him for what he did. So essentially, Pyramid Head is judgment and physical form which is exactly what makes him so menacing and such a good villain figure of Silent Hill 2. As to why he looks the way he did and how someone like James came up with this personification of him, well you can think a specific portrait scene at the Silent Hill Historical Society which showed him this picture of an executioner surrounded by victims in cages. James and his late wife Mary took a vacation to Silent Hill three years prior to the events of the game in which they came across this portrait. Obviously the picture stuck with James as it's the inspiration of the monster punishing him for his crimes throughout the game. Number 4, Claudia Wolf, Silent Hill 3. Revenge for 17 years ago for one thing. If not for him, our dream would have come true. And then he took you away from us. In Silent Hill 3, we're introduced to Claudia Wolf, the new leader of the Order. Unlike Vincent, Claudia is 100% committed to making sure that God is reborn and is very similar to the last leader that we met in Silent Hill, Dahlia Gillespie. Prior to the fire, Claudia and Alessa grew up together as friends and were like sisters to each other. Actually, according to Vincent, it is said that Claudia was so close to Alessa that Dahlia took a liking to her and brainwashed her into believing everything she believed in which is probably why Claudia is so similar to her. 
but there is one major difference between Claudia and Dahlia, and it comes from the fact that Claudia actually loves Alessa. While she is following the same path that Dahlia took, Claudia mainly is doing what she is doing because she believes, probably due to the brainwashing from Dahlia, that Alessa wants God to be reborn. Plus, that this new God will bring some sort of paradise to them. And when Heather rejects Claudia's claims regarding what Alessa wants, Claudia puts the blame on Harry Mason, the adoptive father of Heather, saying that Harry had brainwashed her into believing this is what she wants. See, Claudia is primarily motivated by two things. One, her mission to complete what she believes Alessa always wanted. And two, to seek out revenge on the man that stole away her childhood friend and bring her back home. Which brings us to a major moment in Silent Hill 3. While I was mad about him being killed off screen, Harry Mason, the main character of the first Silent Hill game, is murdered by Claudia. Well, one of her missionaries did the deed, but she gave the order, so same thing. She did it out of revenge, but also because she wanted to fill Heather with hatred so that one, she'll return to Silent Hill for vengeance against Claudia, and two, to feed the god inside of Heather as it feeds on anger and hatred. Despite all the evil things that Claudia has done, including killing a beloved Silent Hill character, she still a pretty conflicted character with the fans. It's a big reason why she cracks the top 5. While we obviously hate her with the passion for all that she's done, we also feel for her after learning more about her past. Like how she was abused both verbally and physically by her father in an effort to force the Order's teachings onto her. Or how she lost her childhood friend, the one person that she cared about and that seemed to care about her. Or even the fact that she is actually doing what she's doing to Heather because of Dahlia's brainwashing into making her think that this is what Alessa always wanted. It's a sad, tragic background for this character and while she's definitely someone that is meant for the players to hate, you can't help but feel for her regarding how she became who she is in Silent Hill 3. Number 3. Dahlia Gillespie, Silent Hill I was shocked to realize the talisman of Metrotron was being used. In spite of the lost soul returning at last. Just a little longer and all would have been for naught. It's all because of that man. We must be thankful to him. Even though Alessa has been stopped, his little girl has to go. What a pity. <laughs> Dahlia may not have claimed the number one spot for best villain in Silent Hill, but she definitely makes a strong case for one of the most despicable characters of the franchise. As the leader of the infamous cult in the first game, The Order, Dahlia's main motivation is completing a ritual that'll allow her daughter, Alessa, to give birth to the Order's Dark God. When Alessa was young, she began showing signs of having abilities. Instead of showing concern like a normal mother would, Dahlia made a case for Mother of the Year by seeing this opportunity to bring her religion's god into the mortal world at the cost of her own daughter's life. So when Alessa was only 7 years old, Dahlia began multiple different rituals to summon god which eventually led to her family house catching on fire. It was in this fire that Alessa was burnt beyond recognition and, using her power, sent part of her soul away to be raised by the Masons. During the events between Silent Hill Origins and Silent Hill, Dahlia spent most of her time torturing Alessa in an effort to force Alessa to summon Cheryl, the part of her soul that lived with the Masons, to return back to Silent Hill. Eventually, Dahlia's plan actually worked and Cheryl returned to Silent Hill which triggered the Fog World and the other world of Silent Hill. These two worlds were outside the normal town of Silent Hill and both resided in their own realms where Alessa's nightmares stalked the streets. Throughout the first game, Dahlia spends most of her time manipulating Harry Mason into defeating her daughter and therefore removing any obstacles preventing her from finishing the ritual. Regardless of what ending you go with, Dahlia is burnt to death which is kind of poetic considering what she did to her daughter. Unfortunately, Dahlia's bad parenting isn't the only crime committed by this psychotic cult leader. While we don't know the full details, we know that Dahlia had some sort of alliance with Kaufman that related to the drug PTV. Actually, there is a distinct possibility that her knowledge of PTV may have been how she convinced Kaufman to save Alessa, report her death, and hide her under Akamila Hospital. Plus, if you remember what I said when we were discussing Claudia Wolf, there is a distinct possibility that Dahlia played a major part in turning Claudia into the villain that she was in Silent Hill 3. Hell, there is even a connection between her and Walter Sullivan, the serial killer that became the main antagonist of Silent Hill 4, The Room. Apparently, she's the one that told Walter about Room 302 being where his mother was at and in order to reach her, he would need to perform the 21 sacraments. Obviously, Dali is one manipulative woman and is hands down one of the best villains of Silent Hill. 
Number two, Maria, Silent Hill 2. James, honey, did something happen to you? After we got separated in that long hallway? Are you confusing me with someone else? <laughs> you were always so forgetful. Remember that time in the hotel? Maria? You said you took everything. But you forgot that videotape we made. I wonder if it's still there. Maria is arguably the main antagonist of Silent Hill 2, although not many people are aware of that due to her being overshadowed by Pyramid Head. But even though James fights Pyramid Head throughout the game multiple times, it's actually revealed that Pyramid Head is kind of the part of James that attempts to make him see reality. Therefore, he's more of the minor secondary antagonist at best. Maria, on the other hand, is a manifestation that's sole purpose is to make James forget about Mary and live in a delusional world created from his mind. Essentially, Maria is everything that James wishes Mary was before she died. She is the manifestation of his sexual desires and a healthy version of Mary that doesn't verbally abuse him, but instead clings onto him. This is why we constantly see Maria begging for his help or even asking to be by his side so that he can protect her. Because of this, we see Maria taking every opportunity to seduce James and do everything in her power to make him forget about Mary completely. Actually, it's kind of implied thanks to the Born From A Wish episode that James pretty much wished her into existence to help him forget about her. And the guilty side of James created Pyramid Head, which is why we continue to see Pyramid Head kill Maria time and time again. In fact, we see Maria willing to go to extreme measures to make James forget about Mary and what he did to her. Stuff like how she would offer sexual favors to him if he saved her, yell and cry to him when he left her, and even attempted to kill him when he finally rejected her at the end of the game. Hell, at one point she even pretended to be Mary briefly just to try to win James over before she slipped back into her normal, confident self. Most endings of Silent Hill 2 set Maria up as the final boss fight of the game because ultimately it comes down to the last obstacle standing in James's way of accepting the reality of what he did. Yet there is one ending that takes a different approach. What if James never accepted the reality of what he did? Instead, what if he gave into his desires for Maria, a Mary that never was? Well, the Maria ending gives us a small taste of that to show Maria and James leaving Silent Hill together, only to be followed by Maria having a cough that may have implied that history is about to repeat itself. And because James gave into his dark desire that is Maria, we even see a darker and more soulless James respond to Maria with a somewhat sinister tone, implying that he let the monster inside of him take over by giving into Maria. If that doesn't demonstrate a true legendary yet untraditional main antagonist, then I don't know what would. <coughs> You'd better do something about that cough. Number one, Walter Sullivan, Silent Hill 4, The Room. Hey there, little Walter. Just a little longer now. Final sign, the receiver of wisdom. I'm someone who loves Silent Hill for the room, but I'm also probably one of the biggest haters of the main protagonist of the game, Henry. But to be completely honest, that might have to do with the game having one of, if not the best villain in Silent Hill, Walter Sullivan. Compared to a character with a backstory such as his, Henry had some pretty big shoes to fill and rival. Part of me kind of felt bad for Walter, despite him being a serial killer, of course. Even though we learned about Walter Sullivan thanks to a file in Silent Hill 2, it was Silent Hill 4 that dived more into his backstory and how Walter became the person that he was. First, we learned about how he was born in a nearby town of Silent Hill. Him and his parents lived in the same room as Henry lives in during the events of Silent Hill 4, room 302. One day, the parents disappeared and left Walter behind, to which Walter became a ward of the state and was brought to Wish House an orphanage just outside of Silent Hill. Of course, the cult had a massive presence here, which led to them teaching the orphans of their dark religion. Dahlia, the main antagonist of Silent Hill and the leader of the cult at the time, meets Walter and begins teaching him about the 21 sacraments. She also was the one that told him that his mother was in room 302, and it's what led Walter to believe that his mother became the room. 
As he grew older, Walter lived a horrible life that was filled with torment. Then, when Walter hit adulthood, something changed inside of him. He accepted that the world was wicked, and in an effort to reunite with his mother, he began the 21 sacraments. This was a string of murders that were sacrifices to the order's god. Walter believed that doing all 21 sacrifices would allow him to meet his mother in room 302. Upon the murder of the first 10 victims, something weird and kind of unexplained happened. A man who was said to be Walter Sullivan was convicted for the 10 murders and arrested. While in prison, this Walter Sullivan claimed someone made him do it and then killed himself. But apparently, this was a fake Walter Sullivan, but it's left unknown as to why this fake Walter Sullivan murdered people. Either the real Walter Sullivan manipulated him into it or possessed him after entering the other world. Regardless of the how, the fact remains that the real Walter Sullivan actually performed a ritual in room 302 that allowed him to enter the other world. From here, he was able to continue the sacrifices, which led to the death of many people that did Walter dirty in the past. Andrew, a man that may have been responsible for the death of Walter's childhood friend. Cynthia, a woman that called Walter disgusting and weird. And Richard, a tenant of the apartment that Walter thought his mom was at, who yelled at Walter and complained about him constantly. Eventually, Walter, who acted as a ghost from the other world, arrived at the final two sacrifices, Eileen and Henry. Depending on the ending of Silent Hill 4, Walter Sullivan's fate could go one of two ways. Either he dies trying to fight Henry and finish the ritual, or he's reunited with Room 302 and what he believes is his mother. But honestly, the worst ending is actually probably the most interesting in terms of the lore, as Walter Sullivan is reunited with Room 302 and we find him sleeping and happy to be with his mother again. Also, it's kind of creepy because it means he's basically a serial killer that can live beyond death. But that does it for this episode of Nerd Space Games. Hit up the comments and let me know what you think about my number one choice. Is Walter Sullivan really the best villain of the franchise or do you think I should have gone with someone more iconic like Pyramid Head? And while you're at it, do you think I missed any villains that should have cracked this list? Let me know down below. Anyway, if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe and leave a like on today's video. But thanks for watching and as always, I'll catch you guys on the next episode of Nerd Space Games. Take care.